Hey everyone, I'm Dark Quarter, and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. So last time, I mean, I were, well, kind of having difficulties getting along. It seemed like she was stressed or hiding something, and uh, she basically said it was because of exams, but kind of figured out that it's not really the exams that's doing it to her, that's making her act weird. And she said she's fine, but obviously she's not, so we came by to her room to kind of ask her about it. So here we go. I set Emmy's legs by the bedside and sit down next to her, throwing an arm around her shoulders. In silence, we just enjoyed being able to be in this position again for a few minutes. Then, of course, I need to ruin it by opening my mouth. Look, I know that I thought you'd been having a rough time of it lately, and I want to help you out. I thought it was just exams getting to you, but now I came to your room and you've been crying, and that kills me. But I can't do anything if you won't talk to me about it. I told you, I'm fine. No, you aren't. It's obvious something's eating at you. You can tell me, you know. There's the slightest increase in tension in Emmy's voice. Why is my saying I'm fine not good enough? You're concerned, I get that. That's cool. But I'm fine, and there's nothing that you need to worry about. Not sleeping and spicing out more than rain doesn't strike me as being fine. I just... I want to help. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't like seeing you like this. I want you to be happy, you know? I get the feeling that it came out wrong because Emmy fixes me with an icy stare. So you want to fix me, Hisseo? She's definitely getting angry now. Want to swoop in the Nayora White Charger and save the day? Stop the nightmares, the phantom limb pains. Restore what's lost. Her voice catches in her throat and the tears start to flow. Well, you can't. Nobody can. Nobody will. I'm so stunned by her sudden verbal assault that I remain quiet. Neither of us says anything for a while. I'm surprised that Emmy tightens her grip on me rather than pushing me away. After a deep breath, she starts talking again. Look, I'm sorry. I just thirsty nightmares. About the accident. Ah, the accident. I should have known. It took her legs after all, but it never comes up, of course. And I usually deal with them fine because I can run. Running clears my head like nothing else. I don't have to worry about anything while I'm running. I just concentrate on breathing and the rhythm of things. It's easier that way. Life's easier that way. Just keep moving forward, you know? Nothing else matters. Just getting around the next curve. And then it's the next curve, and the next, and the next, until I can't go anymore. Or think anymore. Or do anything but slow down and walk until I catch my breath again. After something like that, nothing else matters. But I've been stuck in that Dakota wheelchair for too long, so no athlete. Today it just kind of boiled over a little. You could have talked to me about it, you know. You didn't have to go it alone. Emmy smiles sadly, just like she's trying to explain to a child that all fire burns. Yeah, I did. And I do. But why? Why do you have to keep going through this alone? Why can't you just trust me enough to get, let me help you? That smile again. Emmy leans in and kisses me on my cheek, an almost motherly gesture. She leaves her mouth close to my ear as she confesses this one thing to me. Because, Hisseo, I've already had everything I knew left away from me once. I don't know what I'd do if it happened again. She pauses as if uncertain as to whether or not she should continue. I can feel a violent churning in my gut. She continues. So I can't rely on you. Or the nurse. Or anyone else. Just me. That's how it's got to be. Having delivered this short speech, she looks down and covers her mouth with the back of her hand. The conversation is clearly over. I search for something to say, but I can't think of anything. I... Maybe I should go, for now. I've got stuff. And things. Emmy doesn't even look up. She sounds tired, or relieved. I can't tell which. Okay, Asil. Go take care of that stuff. And things. I'll see you tomorrow. 
I get off the bed and head for the door, pausing at the doorway. Hey, Amy. Yeah? A thousand things I want to say. I'm too mixed up to say any of them, though. After her admitting that she'll never let me too close, I feel like my world's just been ripped out from me. What happened in that accident? I know she lost her legs, but that's never seemed to bother her. What happened there? What scares a girl so badly that she won't accept help, even from someone she loves? I don't know. But I want to know. I want to know so badly that being denied that answer feels like a knife in my guts. Vasil? You are saying? I'm still standing in the doorway. Nothing. Never mind. Come on, dude. Stay. And I'm closing the door. And I'm walking down the hallway. Down the stairs. Out the door. Into the street. And that car runs me over. And I die. Then I become a ghost. And then I haunt Emmy forever. Into the dark. Somehow I wander back to my own room. My brains are doing a mile a minute, going nowhere fast. I can't figure out how to deal with this. I thought that moving forward was a good thing. Dwelling less in a past that I can't change, living in the present and looking at the future. After this thing with Emmy, I'm not sure anymore. She was saying the truth. It's simpler to look at the next curve, ignoring the path gone by. No worry about the opponent left behind, no care for the spectators on the sidelines. And unfortunately, no time to watch out for lacking teammates either. I throw myself down on the bed, looking at one corner of my ceiling as if the answers I want were written there. No such luck, of course. She's literally running away from something, but I have not been doing the same thing, trying my best to forget about my hospitalization. I am getting better, but my health isn't going to magically fix itself. Emmy has two legs instead of a heart to deal with, but those aren't going to magically fix themselves either. Maybe this is just as fixed as both of us can get. The room becomes darker and darker, until I can't really tell I'm looking at a corner anymore. The morning comes too soon, on the heels of a sleepless night. Is this how Emmy's been spending her nights? Staring at the wall or ceiling, trying to stop thinking about whatever it is. Terror in my case. A clenched feeling in my gut is still there. I can't rely on you. Words spoken so casually. Almost like she were teasing me or chastising me for suggesting that the earth is flat. That's how it's got to be. The way it's got to be sucks. I'm feeling so miserable that I very nearly decide to skip the run. That would be stupid though. It's not something I should do just to see her. Sure, that was the original reason, but it's something more now. I've started to enjoy the running itself. There are worse ways to get the blood flowing anyway. Never thought I'd say it after that first week or so, but I feel a lot better after a run. Like no matter what else I do today, I've at least done that one thing. It wakes me up too, and Emmy herself said that running always clears her mind. Maybe it'll help clear mine. I hope so. The morning is cool and clear, if a bit humid. Summer's making itself known, it seems. Emmy's already stretching out when I arrive, and greets me with a smile and a wave. Hey, you see you. The sight of her so chipper is like a kick in the nuts. How can she be so happy after yesterday? I gave a half wave and I was surprised to receive a hug. Hey, about the last night. Here it comes. I wanted to say thanks. I actually managed to get some sleep for the first time in a while, and I think it's because I want to talk. So thanks. How could she sleep better after our chat? She basically told me that she wouldn't get any closer to me. And that let her sleep well? Excuse me, but what the hell? Emmy either doesn't notice my bafflement or chooses not to notice. No telling with her anymore. I have no problem, Kaleida helped. The venom that threatens to drip into my voice is controlled for now, but I think I'd better start running now before I do anything stupid. Emmy seems equally willing to get started, and before long we're darting around the track. I can tell she feels more relaxed. Her running has gone back to the more graceful movements I remember from when I first watched her. It's a stark contrast to the almost brutal way she's been hurling herself around the track these past few days. Our talk really does seem to have helped her. A pity it couldn't help me. I get into the rhythm of the running, thinking back to when I couldn't afford thinking about anything else but keeping my brain steady and legs moving. 
Guess those days are gone. At least for the first couple of laps. I know that the luck of success I'm having with clearing my head, I increase the pace. Ah, but there's the burning sensation in my legs. The breaths coming ragged in my chest, the pounding of my heart, which I still need to be careful about. But it does seem to have gotten stronger. I can feel it pumping blood through my veins. The sound thrones in my ears, but instead of being panicked as I was that day in the snow, I'm instead filled with elation. Yes, it's working. My heart, that fit of flaw that landed me here, has improved. I'm able to keep going now, and maybe one day I'll be able to stop worrying as much. Right now, it doesn't matter that I have no idea what to do about Emmy and I. All that matters is that my arms and legs continue to pump in concert with one another. Nothing else. As I hit the final stretch, I remind myself that running really does help, though not as much as I'd hoped. I do feel better, and as I walk a few laps to cool down, I begin to remember last night in a slightly less emotional manner. Emmy wants me to stay distant from her. I can't bring myself to do so. There's got to be a way around this, some kind of middle ground I can reach. Not sure what that middle ground is, though. Damn, I was almost feeling optimistic. Nice run, they say. You've really improved. Nice run. That's all I can hope for now, isn't it? Congratulations, Aseo. You're pathetic. I gotta change my attitude. Well, you know, I'm pretty awesome. And yet I just keep saying things that I don't mean. Any second now I'll be as good at hiding my problems as Emmy is. I like to think so. Why does she do this to me? Say something like that with such real affection in her voice that it makes my heart leap. She doesn't mean it. She can't. I must be doing a worse job than I thought because Emmy peers closely at me. Hey, you feeling okay? Maybe we should get to the nurse, huh? Yeah, I'd hate to kill over on you. Amy looks a little shocked at my bitter tone. Don't say things like that. You've already done it once before, you know. Why does she act so affectionate? She doesn't really care. I thought she made that clear. But despite all of it that I find myself apologizing even though I shouldn't have to. Even though she's probably just putting on an act. Sorry, heh. Come on, let's see the nurse. I can't get myself to calm down the whole time. Every time it feels like I've gotten over what happened last night, Emmy does something that, or says something that shows affection, and I'm back to the beginning. The image of her ending that conversation haunts me. It was like the final twist of the night that left me feeling bereft of any hope that Emmy and I could be more than what we are. And what are we at this point? A little more than friends who happen to fuck. And really, it's not like I don't enjoy the time I spend with her. Said so the other day myself. I very nearly didn't even bring my anything up with her. Was just gonna hop on in there and let it ride, wasn't I? With this running through my head, I find myself in front of the nurse's office, still brooding as he checks out Emmy. Emmy comes bounding out of the door, gives me a kiss, and darts off to the shower, I assume. Meanwhile, the nurse beckons me into his office to give me the ritual once over. Any problems today? Nah, I even pushed a little harder today than I have in the past and it seemed able to handle it. That's uncharacteristically risky coming from you, Asayo. You've been hanging out with Emmy too much. She's rubbed off on you, and not necessarily in a good way. At the mention of Emmy's name, I can't help but frown unhappily in spite of my efforts at control. Well now, this is new, don't you think? Last I checked, your usual response to Emmy's name was a grin, not a frown. What exactly happened between you two? Because Emmy doesn't seem to be in on it, whatever it is. She looked more relaxed than I've seen her in weeks, which is unusual for this time of the year. What do you mean by that? By what? For this time of year. I keep trying to find out what's been bothering her, but she clams up as soon as I brace the subject. Then last night she said, Let me guess, she won't tell you because she says she can't trust you. And now you've crushed, because you thought that the two of you were so much more than she seems to think, right? Uh, more or less. How the heck did you know? I say you, I'm the nurse. It's my job to know these things. Plus, I've known Emmy for long enough to know that she'd try to do something like this. It's just like her. He says this in the sort of half-affectionate, half-frustrated tone that would seem more appropriate if he had a cigarette dangling from his lips. As it is, he seems willing to make do with a pen. Look, you mind if I gave you some advice? Uh, sure. Why not? 
What was it Mutu said yesterday? If you can't observe the thing, then observe what's around it. Worth a shot. The nurse knows Emmy better than I do, I'll wager. Sure, I'm open to suggestions. Honestly, I'm kind of lost. I've got no idea how to deal with this. I never would have guessed. He grins while he says this. I think he's kidding. Look, here's the deal. Emmy is... stubborn. You should know that by now. And if you don't, then you're pretty unobservant. But I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt here. I'm so grateful. Anyway, if she's decided that she doesn't want to talk about what happened, then she's not going to talk about what's happened. Has she said anything about what's been bothering her? Even a hint? Well, she did say that she's been having nightmares about the accident. Really? You're making progress then. That's good. Well, I guess I can feel you in on this without violating my strict non-interference policy when it comes to Emmy making stupid decisions. The anniversary of her accident is coming up soon. She gets depressed around this time because it was a pretty traumatic event, considering what she lost. That's the other thing. She acted like she lost more than just her legs. What happened? Whoa, nope, not going there. You'll have to ask someone else about that because that's a whole can of worms I'm not about to open. If Amy wants you to know, she'll tell you in her own time. You just gotta be patient, that's all. Why you even help me out with all this? Because you're good for her. She trusts you, even if you don't think she does. And you've got the best chance of any anyone at the school right now to help her through this time of year. She won't accept my help, but she might accept yours if you don't screw it up. So don't screw it up, got it? I open my mouth to respond, but a knocking sound at the door interrupts me. Hey, you guys still in there? Just a moment, Emmy. Give us a second to get our pants back on. The door bursts open and Emmy glares knives at the nurse. Asshole. Didn't mean to get your hopes up. Hey, can we leave me out of this? Anyway, waste up, Amy. Forget something? I try to take a more cheerful tone with her. No need to upset her. Two completely everything's fine game. Actually, I forgot to ask you something. Oh, what's it? Do you want to come with me on a trip to my house? My mom's making dinner, and I thought you might want to join us. Well, of course, I accept. Amy punches the nurse in the arm playfully. No, you idiot. You were over last week. I was talking to a sale. Oh, how interesting. Meeting the parents. I'd love to go, Amy. Thanks. The nurse raises an eyebrow but says nothing. Great. I'll be in my room, swing by after your shower, and change into something clean, and we'll grab the bus. Oh, we're going now? Sounds good. I'll see you in a bit. This time it's me who leans in for a quick kiss before darting off to my room. Okay, that's kind of sudden. What an interesting development. Maybe we're getting closer after all. Maybe Amy's finally ready to open up a little. Or maybe she's just being polite and a free meal seems like a good way to apologize for last night. Great, now I can't decide whether to be excited, nervous, or depressed. I settle for a combination of all three and hop in the shower. Yeah, combination sounds right. Katoa Shoujo, brought to you by Ready Whip. I don't think I like riding on buses. Actually, I think I'm pretty uncomfortable saying that as a fact. They sway a lot and they smell funny and you can feel every bump in the road. I'm really not looking forward to this. Plus, Emmy's legs keep making a clanking noise that draws the attention of everyone else on the bus. She's in shorts again and she's got long socks thrown up on her prosthetics so they don't look obviously false again. But that doesn't stop the odd look or two every time her legs bump together with an audible clunk. I shift nervously in my seat and Emmy raises an eyebrow questioningly. She doesn't seem to mind the stares, either that or she doesn't even notice that people are staring. I'm sure she's gotten her fill of odd looks before. After a certain amount of time, I doubt she'd notice any more. Not that she'd ever tell me if I asked. Another fact is, I'm not just uncomfortable about the bus. I can't seem to come to terms with the fact that Emmy appears to be trying to bring me closer while at the same time pushing me away. The nurse said that she trusts me, even if it doesn't look like it. But I'm not sure I can trust the nurse. He's protective of Emmy, just like I'm protective of Emmy, and I'd be likely to say something to make her look good if someone asked me about her. So he might just be doing that. 
Still, there was something about the way he seemed genuinely surprised at Emmy invited me along. Maybe last night's talk helped me more than I think, but I'm still worried. Meeting the parents is a big deal, right? Not that I haven't already met Emmy's mother, but that was just as an acquaintance. Now it's going to be as Emmy's boyfriend, with everything that implies. I can feel my heart pounding in my chest and echo of that snow-covered afternoon that feels like it was so long ago that it might as well be another life entirely. Except then, I didn't know what I was going on. I also didn't have medication to help prevent things spiraling out of control. I've come a long way in terms of my physical health, and for the second time today I feel like I'll be able to live normally now, or at least as normally as possible. Now if only I could manage my relationship as well as I've managed my health, I'd be in great shape. Well, what are you here? Emmy grabs my hand as soon as we stepped off the bus. She starts heading down the street almost immediately. Come on, we've got a couple of blocks until my place. What? Oh, okay. I follow Emmy down the street, watching her confident stride. She's setting kind of a quick pace for just a walk. I guess she's anxious to get there. So, does your mom do the sort of thing often? Nah, not too frequently. Mom's never been much of a playing hostess. Oh yeah? Yeah, my dad was always just the one pushing out to have people over. This suddenly unprompted reference to her father catches me off guard. I from the look on Amy's face, I'm not sure she meant to mention him. I think I've only ever heard her talking about him once. All I remember is that Amy's mom told me that he wasn't around anymore. Oh, your mom prefers solitude? I mean, laughs either from relief that I didn't ask about her father or from finding my statement actually funny. Not at all. She's why I'm such an outgoing person, you know. She just prefers to be a guest rather than a hostess. It's less stressful that way, or so she says. Clearly she's never had to meet a girlfriend's mother for dinner. Emmy giggles again and speaks in a teasing tone. Nervous, I say you? You shouldn't be, you know. It's not that big a deal. Just turn out to my house, that's all. Yeah, but have you ever brought home a boyfriend before? I confess that part of me dreads hearing the answer to this. I know very little of Emmy's past relationships. I don't even know if there were past relationships. No, I guess I haven't. Hey, maybe this is really kind of a big deal after all. Oh, good. Now I feel twice as nervous. But to tell the truth, I'm pretty happy to hear that I'm the first one. Maybe we've got something special after all. Bolstered by this new thought, I've managed to calm down considerably by the time Emmy knocks on our front door. Hey, Mom, up on up. We're here. The door swings open and Miss Ibrazaki stands grinning at her daughter. The grin is still surprisingly similar to Emmy's. I'm never going to get used to that. You are not. People normally wait for a few minutes before they start shouting at the door. And most mothers say hello to their daughters and start scolding them right away. Ah, of course. Welcome home, dear. I've missed you. An affectionate hug later, we're inside, and it's only then that Emmy's mom seems to remember that I'm actually here. And hello to you too, Asil. How are you? I'm quite well, thank you. Now I still not have school to worry about for a little bit. Ah, yes, you've finished your exams, haven't you? That must be quite a relief for you both. Certainly a weight off my mind, that's for sure. Mine too. I think I slept well for the first time in weeks last night from relief alone. If this news is a surprise to Amy's mother, she doesn't show it. Still, her response betrays a note of interest. Is that so? I'm very glad to hear that, Amy. You know I get worried when you get all wound up about, well, exams. Certainly Amy's mother knows something I don't, or rather she doesn't know that Amy's told me about the nightmares. It's interesting being able to observe how Miss Urbazaki covers for Emmy, that protective instinct to make sure that I don't know any more that Emmy's willing to tell me. I suppose Emmy's got more in common with the quirks than I ever realized. Moves around fast, impossible to understand through direct observation, yet she has an effect on everyone she encounters. I wonder if Miss Urbazaki will find out what I know about the nightmares, or if she's just keeping everything secret from everybody. Yeah, it's not been as bad this year as in the past. It still helped me to stay focused. Okay, I know that's not true. She even cut off contact outside of school hours during exam week. But she did see me during the day, and she told me more than once that the morning run was the only thing she looked forward to during exams. So maybe it's not that much of a lie. 
Either way, to hear that being around has helped even a little makes me feel a bit better. Emmy's mother raises an eyebrow at this statement. Either she doesn't believe Emmy, or she's as surprised as I am. Well, then it appears that that good thing you two have become so close. I tell you to take care of my daughter, Hiseo, but it looks like you've already doing that. Emmy grins at this and seems to take pride in my having managed to ingratiate myself with her mother so easily. Actually, I'd say your daughter's been the one taking care of me. She's gotten me out and running. I've probably been more active since meeting her than I ever was, even before. I'd actually never thought of it that much, nor had I ever appreciated the humor in it. I wasn't too active before the heart attack. Pick up games of soccer don't really count since they weren't that common. So now that I know for sure I have a weak heart, now I run every day, pushing my luck with the help of my medication. I chuckled quietly, then realized that I never finished my sentence. Well, before I had my heart attack and he wound up at school here. It comes out so casually. There was a time that I would have thought twice about talking to what was wrong with me at all. But now? Now it seems silly to care, especially in the company of Emmy and her mother. If Emmy can be cavalier about her disability, then so can I. I think back to the track meet, where Emmy declared herself the fastest thing on no legs. The fact of her obvious loss has never seemed to bother her, at least not in public. Being stuck in the wheelchair frustrated her, I know, but even that was something she dealt with on her own, despite my efforts to the contrary. Emmy has a way of bringing out the more active side in people. I've never quite figured out how she does it. That's the pipe dog eyes she gets, for starters. I'm not surprised that she wants to rope you into an exercise routine. If Rin weren't as stubborn as she is, I'm sure that Emmy would have gotten her out and running with you too. Oh, that reminds me. Rin has, Rin has said hello. Well, I think this is about a good time to stop. So. It's kind of odd, I guess. She's really pushing me away, and now she's happy, seems like. You know, inviting me over for dinner and everything. Huh. How are you going to handle this? I don't know what I would do in the same situation, but anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching, thanks for being cool, and I'll see you next time.